the sweet friends. I wanted to pop on. I'm changing out my sensor that is monitoring my blood sugar and you guys wanted to know how I do it. So here we go. We're going to do it together. This is my first time taking it off. And for those that are new to my blood sugar journey, I actually had a cancer scare a month ago. One of my healthcare practitioners was palpating my abdomen and felt that something was off. And it's right over the area where I had a very rare sarcoma called a desmoid tumor and had multiple hernias from the desmoid tumor. So we had some scans done to check for a cancer occurrence and thank goodness, praise God, there was no cancer occurrence, but they noticed PCOS, so polycystic ovarian syndrome and a uterine fibroid. So PCOS, usually there is an issue with your thyroid or an insulin resistance issue, maybe an underlying blood sugar issue or high testosterone. And my blood test showed a little bit high testosterone. And even though my blood glucose levels were normal and my hemoglobin A1C, which is an average of your blood sugar over a three month period was normal, he ran a test called a glycomark and that was low and it's inversely proportional. So my blood sugar was spiking multiple times in a two week period. So he ordered me, and you have to get this, it's a prescription from your doctor, the Free Style Libre. And it has a reader here, and this insurance covered part of it for me. So this, I paid $39.99 for this. And the sensors are what are kind of pricey. And this is around $130 insurance covers it, I paid 75 and that's for a 30 day supply. So when you wear these patches, they're just good for about 10 days and then you have to take them off. But what's really interesting is instead of poking your fingers all the time, which doesn't feel good, and honestly, I'm not gonna be that compliant to poke myself 10 times a day, you have this scanner and the sensor has a little bitty needle on the inside and you just scan whenever you need to. So I've been tracking my meals to see when I'm spiking. And then my doctor did even more in depth testing and found that I do have an autoimmune marker for insulin. And I'm gonna to talk to him in a couple weeks to get more detail of what that actually means. But we're gonna take the sensor off together. I'm a little nervous because it's on there really good. It's been on my body for 10 days, but the sensor is kind of awesome. There's a little button here and you press that and it tells you when you have to replace it. So what's kind of nice, it says no active sensor here. So I need to take this one off and recalibrate and put another one on. So I brought fractionated coconut oil and lemon oil because I don't, you know, sticky stuff. I don't know how easily this is going to come off, but here we go. Oh, actually, that wasn't bad at all. Ta-da! Okay, and it didn't even bruise that bad considering that there was a needle in me for 10 days. So this is what the little needle looks like when you poke your arm and it's in there and how you track. And you know, it's a little red. Wow, that was not as bad as I was anticipating at all. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of lavender over the area to support the skin, right? And then we will put the new sensor on the other side together on this journey, right? Okay, here we go. So the sensor comes with two different pieces. This is the applicator, and then this is the piece that has the needle inside. And then it does have some alcohol swipes here, and it's just recommended that you rotate arms. So I had it in my left arm for the last 10 days, so let's put it in the right arm, and you just kind of want it on the back of the arm. So I just kind of put the alcohol all around that area to make sure that I get it good. And then we're just gonna let that air dry, throw that away. And then while we're getting the other pieces together, so this twists off and opens up. And this is the applicator. And then we put this piece inside of this piece here to be able to push it, the sensor into the arm. And I really like it, guys. I don't feel it very much. My acupuncturist said it's kind of like having an acupuncture point because that needle is in you for 10 days. And then there's a little line right here. And there's a little line on the applicator right there. And you line them up together. And then you push down until it clicks all the way in here. And then you can see that little needle is now on the inside. So the part that I don't love, but it's better than poking your finger multiple times a day, right? So we're just gonna find a spot on my arm, like right about there. And here we go, one, two, three. Barely felt it. 
And then you just kind of press it in, make sure that that has a good seal on your arm there. And then now you can start doing the scan. So we're going to turn our reader on. And we've got, it says start new sensor. It's actually really easy and it's all touch screen. So we're going to scan it. Okay, and it says new sensor. New sensor is starting up and it takes about 12 hours to calibrate. So once you put a new one on, it takes a little bit of time, but as you guys can see, it's, it just kind of goes on the back of the arm, hangs out there, doesn't really hurt, and it will tell me in 12 hours that I can start scanning it, and it's been really educational and really eye-opening for me on my journey, especially if I've got an autoimmune component related to the insulin, I want to be really diligent because that means I'm at a greater risk of type 1 diabetes and my grandfather has type 1 diabetes. So what I've been noticing on my meals is I don't think I was actually eating enough. Even though I eat clean and I eat real food, I don't think I was eating enough, especially healthy fat and protein. So for me and my particular body, I found that I have to eat almost a whole 30 very clean, grain-free diet, and I'm checking my blood sugar regularly. So how I was taught to check it, I check my fasting glucose, and you want your fasting glucose to be between 75 and 89. First thing in the morning when you're checking that, mine's a little high right now, so I'm working on it. And then I test right before a meal, I eat my meal, test right after a meal, and then I test every 15 minutes up to one hour after that meal and then I test hourly until my next meal. So Jason, my trainer, you guys know I talk about him a lot. He was like, you gotta eat protein and putting on more muscle mass would definitely help with the insulin resistance and with the blood sugar issues too. I'll keep you guys posted as I talk to my doctor. I see my doctor in like another week and we can kind of go through what more of the blood test results mean. And I'm also tracking and writing down all of my foods and all of my levels. So if I wake up in the middle of the night it's so nice to have the sensor and just scan it and see what my levels are because let's get real, I'm not going to wake up at the middle of the night and then go and clean my finger and poke my finger and do all of the stuff related to that. So this works with my everyday life. It's actually worth the investment for me. It's $75. That's my cost and insurance covers part of that because they're like $130 to be able to scan it regularly. And I'm looking at this as an investment in my health and my wellness. Because if your insulin levels are off, blood sugar controls a lot. It affects our thyroid, it affects our sex hormones, your estrogen, your progesterone, your testosterone, all of that stuff can cause fatigue and headaches. And I've been dealing with some fatigue and some daily headaches for a while now. You guys that know my journey know that I've had an extensive, challenging kind of health history with cancer a rare sarcoma with Lyme disease, with adult hip dysplasia, with a lot of different things. So I like taking this integrative approach and I honestly feel like my functional medicine doctor caught this maybe 10 to 15 years before I became diabetic, which is really awesome because there's a lot that we can do with food, with stress management, with optimizing sleep, with exercise, all of that has an effect on our blood sugar. It's amazing and that's a cornerstone. Digestion, you guys know I'm big in working on healing the gut and digestion, but also looking at our blood sugar because it affects so many hormonal things in the body. So I'm using my essential oils to support me, monitoring my meals, and I found for me, I typically eat paleo with the exception of a little bit of white rice. And that little bit of white rice that I was having maybe once or twice a week was spiking me into the 130s. And ideally, you don't want to go over 25 points to what your starting is, what your fasting glucose is. When you eat, you don't want to see that rise more than 25 points. Or you don't want to see it go, you know, ideally like over 125, you know, that can cause some issues. So we, we want it to be pretty steady where you eat and it goes up a little bit and then comes back down to resting within an hour. And that's why Dr. Rita Marie, I learned this from her, she recommends checking every 15 minutes because you see the spike. So usually with your blood sugar, you're gonna see a spike about 30 to 45 minutes after you eat, but everybody's a little different. And this has been fascinating to me. So that little bit of white rice that I was having was spiking me too high. I found paleo chips, like siete chips or siete tortillas, which I love. Those are spiking me a little bit too high, so I have to be super clean, veggies, fat, and protein 
big time, but I'm noticing when I'm eating that way, and I don't think I was eating enough before, I'm feeling full. I can go four hours between meals and not feel yucky and not feel like I need to have snacks. Other interesting thing when I'm testing my blood sugar is when I feel like my blood sugar is too low, like if I feel kind of icky and getting shaky and stuff, it's actually too high. So where I would have been going and grabbing a snack, it's too high. So I'm working on those things. I'm taking inositol, which is a powdered supplement to help with the blood sugar balancing and the PCOS. And I'm also taking magnesium. Magnesium is really important, guys. A lot of us are deficient. I'm taking magnesium supplements, some natural calm after my meals to kind of help bring me down. I'm using exercise as a tool. It's really interesting. And then the other interesting thing that surprised me, if you guys have heard of those Zevia drinks, they're sweetened with stevia. And they were a great swap for my husband. They got my husband off the Cokes because he was a Cokeaholic. So that has been a good thing. And I would have one maybe once or twice a week. And it dropped my blood sugar fast. Like I was around 90 and it dropped me down into the 60s very fast. And when the reader, when something is wonky with the reader, it will clue you in and it'll say, hey, you actually need to prick your finger and take a blood sample. And I have a blood glucose meter too that I use. And that was interesting to me. So I have heard that even though stevia is not supposed to spike your blood sugar, that in some people it's like tricking the brain and that sweet taste can trick the body a little bit and start releasing insulin and that may be going on with me. So I've taken those out. I want to be really diligent and this is about being an empowered patient, right? I want to know my numbers. I want to do what I can do to help with my health and I've noticed that I'm no longer snacking in between meals. My energy seems to be better. If I eat something and it spikes me too high, I don't feel good afterwards. I'm able to kind of correlate that. And I'm working with my acupuncturist and he always listens to my pulses. He checks my pulses. And after a week of eating this way, he was like, Laura, your pulses are stronger. They're the best they've been. So I'm really interested to see what 30 days of eating this way, two months, three months, what this does over time for my body. And if I can put on a little more muscle mass and I work hard with Jason, he works me really hard twice a week <laughs> with the weights, that would be a really great thing. And he said the only way that you can put on muscle mass is if you eat more protein. And I got a couple questions about this. I have tried a vegan diet in the past, guys. Honestly, for me, I did not feel good on it. I actually felt worse but everybody's different. This is why it, I believe in bioindividuality, and I believe that you have to find the right diet that works for you, and you can clue into those tools, being a detective, charting your meals, seeing how you feel. I'm checking my blood sugar levels regularly to see what those specific foods and things are doing to me, and everybody's different. I have private health coaching clients that thrive on a vegan diet. My mentor, Dr. Rita Marie, thrives on a vegan diet, and then I have others that feel kind of icky. My blood type is a type O, and you know, take what you will with that. There's some interesting stuff about the blood typing diet, and you can read that book, but O's are typically more paleo. And I noticed for me, when I took out the grains, my face cleared up, I felt a lot better. And I think you guys have heard me talk about this. When I took gluten, dairy, and sugar out of my diet, my periods regulated, and the chronic constipation that I had had, gone, gone. So I'm a huge believer in integrative health. I'll keep you guys posted with this, but it's a really cool tool. It's a really cool tool. It's very new. So here, when I went to go pick it up, the pharmacist said, you're one of our guinea pigs. Just you and one other lady are using this. So they were asking us, what do you think? How's it working for you? But again, this is the free style Libre. I really like it. I've been comparing it to my blood sugar monitor that I have and I've been testing them a little bit and they're within four points of one another. So I do feel like they're pretty accurate and to free me up to not have to be poking my finger a bajillion times a day is totally worth the investment. So I will keep you posted. I encourage you guys to be the CEO of your health and wellness, be that queen bee. You are the artist of your health and healing and you can ask your doctor to get a script for this if it's something that you wanna try or you know what, you can invest in a glucose meter and you can 
have that on hand and use that as well. Did it mess with you like the Fitbit or the Apple Watch did? No, actually no, I know. I was thinking that too, right? Because it's like a sensor in your arm. But no, I mean, when you first put it in, I feel the needle a little bit, but then it goes away and you kind of get used to it. But I didn't get the numbness and tingling and neuropathy in my hands like I did with the Apple Watch or the Fitbit. And for those of you guys that that's new, for my birthday I got an Apple Watch and I put it on, I literally felt heat, and then I started getting like an ulnar nerve neuralgia in my hand, and then I switched it and put the watch on the other hand and the same thing happened, so I ended up returning it. I've noticed for me, anything that the charging part is touching my skin, it doesn't work well with me. The original Fitbit, the Fitbit Flex works well, and I recently got one of those because I like to track my sleep to know how that's affecting my blood sugar. And I have had no issues with that, but the Apple Watch for me was a no-go. And I will totally say I'll throw me into the category of highly sensitive person, right? I'm the person that at doTERRA's convention, I wear earplugs because it's just so loud for me. And I have to be aware of, you know, being in large crowds, large noises, stuff like that. But yeah, this, is, this one is not messing with me and I really, really love it, so. Talk to your doctor, give it a try. Honestly, this experience has taught me that I think a lot of people have underlying blood sugar issues and they might not even be aware of it. So maybe get a blood glucose meter and start testing and have that on hand. Yes, girl, you'll be wearing earplugs next year, yes. So if you guys see me at convention, just tap me on the shoulder or scream really loud or something because I do keep earplugs in the whole time. I do that on the plane, I do that at you know concerts or anything that's kind of noisy, it, it helps. Yes, I was really glad that it didn't cause any of those problems for me too. And it's been it's been a nice tool. My acupuncturist said it's kind of like an acupuncture treatment because there's a little needle in there and so you're getting kind of an acupuncture benefit too. He said this area is like small intestine digestion. I could use a little bit more support with that, right? So, and they stay on well, like through my detox baths, through my really hard workouts with Jason where I'm sweating a lot, all of those things like my sensor has not fallen off, as you guys saw. It was actually really easy to take off. So it's really helpful to have that on hand. But yeah, this will be up for 24 hours, so you guys can check it out. But I've gotten a lot of questions about this glucose meter. And so you can check it out and see. I'm loving it. I am loving it so far. So this will be on for the next 10 days, and I'll continue to track my blood sugar and keep you guys posted on that. But a lot of things that can help with your blood sugar, magnesium, Inositol is a supplement, you can talk to your doctor about that, but optimizing your vitamin D3 levels can be really important. Taking a good fish oil supplement, you know, like our Lifelong Vitality Pack, having that on hand, all of those are gonna be good things that help support you with your blood sugar and actually zinc. So I think I'm gonna be adding in more zinc a little bit on top of what I'm taking already and I'll continue to monitor because it's a slow and steady process, right? We don't expect changes immediately overnight, but I'm really hopeful that over the next month, two months, three months, we're gonna see some big changes with this and I can't wait to post and share with you guys. And I have noticed I have to stay on top of my digestive enzymes, my terazyme, so that I can tolerate all the extra protein. I have to take digestive enzymes, otherwise I'm really feeling it. So if you're going from not eating a whole lot of protein to eating a lot of protein, Go slowly with that, listen to your body. My trainer Jason wanted me taking around 135 grams of protein. And basically you take your ideal weight, and this is for big time lifting training, and that's gonna be your goal for how many grams. So I'm eating real food, I'm eating lots of healthy fats, I feel like it's working and it's being really helpful. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day, bye.